Hello there to all of you, my organic farming enthusiasts, and welcome to yet another video here on our tiny garden, where we are always dedicated to the science and the art of organic farming. In this video, we take a look at the biological control of white flies. Briefly looking at the overview of white flies is that white flies are small sap-sucking insects that are known for their powdery white appearance and resemblance to very tiny moths. White flies are commonly found in warmer temperatures or warmer climates and are very notorious agricultural pests feeding on the sap of a wide variety of plants including vegetables, ornamentals and fruit trees. White flies can cause significant damage to plants by draining their nutrients, transmitting plant viruses and promoting the growth of what we call sooty mold. Identifying white flies is relatively straightforward due to their distinctive appearance. These small insects typically measure around 1 to 3 millimeters in length. They have powdery white wings and bodies that resemble tiny moths. When disturbed, they often flutter around the underside of plant leaves in a characteristic manner. White flies also leave behind small waxy yellowish eggs on the undersides of leaves, which can aid in their identification. The presence is usually accompanied by sticky honeydew secretions and the development of black sooty mold on affected leaves. White flies are highly adaptable pests with a wide range of host plants. They infest various crops, ornamental plants and weeds, making them a significant concern for agricultural and horticultural industries worldwide. Common host plants for white flies include vegetables such as tomatoes, cucumbers and brassicas, as well as ornamental plants like hibiscus and roses. Fruit trees such as citrus, grapes and cotton are also susceptible to white fly infestation. White flies can also thrive on many weed species, serving as reservoirs for infestations. The destructive impact of white flies in agriculture is profound, posing significant challenges to crop productivity and economic viability. So aside from the presence of white powdery insects and the secretion of sticky honeydew, white fly infestation can also manifest with yellowing, wilting, stunted growth of the crops. We can also have leaf curling or distortion, reduced vigor and premature leaf drop. These symptoms can vary depending on the severity of the infestation and the host plant species, but these serve as a crucial indicator for early detection and management of white fly population in agricultural and horticultural settings. White flies act as vectors for the transmission of tomato yellow leaf curl virus, commonly abbreviated as TYLCV. This is a devastating pathogen that affects tomato plants. When white flies feed on infected plants, they acquire the virus, which replicates within their bodies. Subsequently, as they move to feed on healthy plants, they then transmit the virus through their saliva, introducing it into the plant's vascular system. Once inside the plant, TYLCV causes characteristic symptoms such as yellowing and curling of leaves, stunted growth, and reduced fruit production. This transmission cycle highlights the critical role of white flies in spreading tomato yellow leaf curl virus and underscores the importance of implementing effective control measures to manage both the vector and the disease that it carries. Another virus that is transmitted by white flies is cassava mosaic virus, also abbreviated as CMV. CMV is a destructive pathogen that affects cassava plants, which is a crucial staple crop for millions of people in tropical regions. CMV causes characteristic symptoms such as mosaic patterns on leaves, leaf distortion, stunted growth, and reduced root yield. The virus can spread rapidly, leading to significant yield losses and threatening food security in affected regions. Cucabit yellow stunting disorder virus, also abbreviated as CYSDV, is also transmitted by white flies. This is a significant threat to cucabit crops worldwide and it's primarily transmitted by the silver leaf white fly, also known as Bimicia tabasi. The virus causes yellowing and stunting of leaves 
leading to reduced yields and fruit quality in cucurbit plants such as cucumbers, melons, and squash. Bemisia tabasi or sweet potato whitefly is a notorious vector of several other viruses that include sweet potato leaf cull virus, cotton leaf cull virus, cassava brown streak viruses, and many others. So now we look at the control of white flies and we shall take a look at the mechanical and physical control. We shall look at botanical insecticides and we will also look at natural enemies. Mechanical and physical control methods are essential components of integrated pest management strategies for white flies. Mechanical control involves physically removing white fly infested plant material, such as pruning heavily infested leaves or destroying severely affected plants. Vacuuming and shaking plants to dislodge white flies can also be effective. Barriers such as floating raw covers can prevent white flies from accessing plants, reducing infestation levels. Yellow sticky traps attract and capture adult white flies, helping to monitor populations and reduce the numbers. These methods, when combined with other cultural and biological control measures, contribute to sustainable management of white fly populations. A brief overview of how the yellow sticky traps work. These traps utilize the color yellow, which is highly attractive to white flies. They mimic the appearance of host plant foliage. When white flies are drawn to the traps, they become stuck on the adhesive surface, preventing them from feeding and laying eggs on nearby plants. Regular monitoring using yellow sticky traps helps gauge white fly population levels and aids in making informed pest management decisions. Next control measure is by the use of biopesticides. So we have a variety of biopesticides. We have neem-based products, we have pyrethrum, we have rotenan, and we also have sabadilla. In my previous video, we discussed at length neem-based products, and in this video, we'll be discussing at length pyrethrum-based products. So if you haven't watched my previous video, I suggest that you go back for you to have an understanding of neem-based products, and then you can come back to this video and learn more on pyrethrium based products and how it works. Pyrethrium contains natural insecticidal compounds known as pyrethrins, which effectively control white flies. When applied, pyrethrium disrupts the nervous system of white flies, leading to paralysis and eventual death. It acts quickly upon contact with the insects and has a relatively low toxicity to mammals, making it a preferred option for organic and environmentally conscious pest management. Pyrethrium based products are available in various formulations including sprays and dust. Pyrethrum based products are so much affordable and highly highly available especially if you're living in my country Kenya. You know that we have a lot of uh, pyrethrum in the country so let's make use of what we already have naturally. Next category of biological control of white flies is by the use of entomopathogenic fungi. Now we have various uh, entomopathogenic fungi that can be used. We have Bouveria bassiana, we have Isaria species, we have Lesanicillium lesani, and we also have Metahesium anisopilae. In this video, we shall only take a look at one entomopathogenic fungi, and that is Lesanicillium lesani. Lesanicillium lesani is also known as Verticillium lesani, which is a naturally occurring fungus that is used for biological control of white flies. This entomopathogenic fungus infects and kills white flies by penetrating their cuticles and proliferating within their bodies, ultimately leading to their demise. Commercial formulations of Lesanicillium lesani are available for agricultural and horticultural settings. Upon application, the fungus adheres to the cuticles of white flies and penetrates their bodies. Inside the white flies, Lesanicillium lesani releases enzymes that degrade the insect's tissues, leading to its eventual death. As infected white flies come into contact with healthy individuals, the fungus can spread within the population through direct contact or by releasing spores into the environment. This secondary infection mechanism contributes to the efficient control of white 
atmosphere population and this biocontrol agent is particularly effective against various life stages of whiteflies which includes eggs, nymphs and adults. The final category of biological control measures against whiteflies is by the use of natural predators. Here we can use ladybugs, we can use green lacewings, we can use hoverflies, parasitoid wasps like Encasia formosa and Eretmoceras eremicus. We have minute pirate bugs, we can also use predatory mites and we can also use predatory beetles. We are only going to focus on one and we shall focus on Eretmoceras eremicus. This is a parasitoid wasp and it is a highly specialized parasitoid of white flies. And because of this, it is highly valued for its high parasitism rates as it effectively controls white fly populations. And the most important thing is that Eretmoceras eremicus is commercially available. These tiny wasps parasitize whitefly nymphs by laying their eggs inside them. Once the eggs hatch, the developing wasp larvae feeds on the internal tissues of the whitefly nymph, eventually killing it. And that is it. If you have any questions or if you need any clarification, please do leave me a comment and I'll sure answer you. Again, I am going to link down below in the description box links to companies where you can get these biological control measures. In the next video, we shall be taking a look at the biological control of thrimps. As always, thank you so much for staying with me up to the end of this video. If you found this content to be informative, please do share it with someone who might be interested in this kind of content. And please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until the next video, happy gardening.